there was a comment on one of the videos this week. I'll go ahead and look it up so that way we can put it down here, uh, down at the bottom. But oh, it's all the way down here. Right, um, so and it, it hinted at a topic. I don't think it called it out specifically, but it hinted at at a topic. Um, so I'll find it. Uh, and what the comment, uh, the way I interpreted the comment, was why are we worrying so much about defense, right? Mm. If you like what you see so far, hit that bell for more. You don't talk like that. I don't. Because you look at it, you have a basically a whole team of returning players on the defense. You could you yes. really have, you right now could start eleven, and they're all returning players, right? Yes. Even if you, even if you start Phillips over Oliver. That's it. It's all returning players. If you're starting Lorenzo at Sam, you're starting, you know, Phillips at DT, you got a whole defense of returning players. Yes. So why are we focused so much on the defense when the offense is what scores points? Right? I think it's a fair question because you know what? You're kind of right that yeah. all offseason it was about adding like adding in pieces to the offense, but nothing that was really like blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Right? You look at the offensive additions, you're like, oh, well, that could be a good signing. Oh, I could see why they signed that guy. Oh, okay, I that guy makes sense. But none of them were, holy crap, the Bills did it. The Bills added this guy, right? No so, Oakland moves? Like no that? Oakland moves. Well, I mean, in a, in a good way. I mean, we, we got a taste of it when the Antonio Brown thing came around, right? We got a taste of, oh, my God, the Bills are, are making a big addition, right? But for the most part, they were all like, oh, yeah, I get why they signed that guy. So why are are we, a, as a media, right, and we as fans so obsessed with the defense versus the offense? I think it's a fair point because it i got to be honest point. with you. I kind of am focused a little bit more on the defense than I am the offense. I am and I don't, I can't say I don't, I can't say I know why. Well, I, top of my head. You dra your first pick was a defender. Yeah. So you got Oliver. Which, I mean, you could see coming from a mile away. You could. You could. And once the Raiders drafted, yes, you could. Yeah, see right. <laughs> uh, so you start to defense. Why you're focused so much on the defense is just like, I'll give you a philosophical view about mm -hmm. it. The minute you become complacent in anything, mm -hmm. you start losing your edge. Right. Um, the Bills had a great defense last year. The run defense wasn't as good. However, compared to 2017... 2017 gave up more yards than 2018. Here's the two things that I thought was very interesting going on your point. When the defense gives up less than 100 yards rushing, McDermott is 8-7, and seven, which you seems really think, odd. That seems like you would... It seems very odd. So that means that you're either sacrificing something in the past game. Mm -hmm. Your offense didn't score anything. Remember, they lost 9-3 to three to Carolina. You give up 9 points. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Um... But the other thing was, in, tw in 2017, the Buffalo Bills gave up 1,994 rushing yards. Yeah. In 2018, they gave up 1,839. Right. I guess it was much more poignant. And they actually gave up more rushing touchdowns in 2017 than 2018. Yeah, 2018 hurt, though. Uh, it did. Like, the timing of the touchdowns and the yeah. stuff that happened. But I think w the reason why you focus more on the defense rather than the offense is, A, it's, it's a lot easier to fix. B means that... You want to start getting your offense more possessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were a dominant, dominant defense. We were ranked second, and second in the past. I think they were like was it third overall or something like that. I don't remember where they finished. Well, they, yeah, I can't remember. You then start to realize, listen, we see, we need to get more possessions for our offense, and we need to start adjusting to what teams are starting to do to us. Mm -hmm. uh, so you add up, you add all these uh, these pieces to it. Now, does it say that? Their offense is not where it's supposed to be because they keep adding so many defensive pieces. Like, listen, we're going to have to get more possessions. Or we're going to have to add more depth because they're going to have more three and outs this year or any of that stuff. I'm fine with adding to the defense. I'm well, really fine with that. Yeah, I mean, the defense, I, I said this last week, the defense owns the first six weeks of the season. Right, and you've got two division games in the first four weeks. Mm -hmm. So the Bills having all eleven returning from the defense is a major win, right? Because these are all guys that already understand the system. They're they're going to be able to adjust to whatever Frazier and McDermott want to run. Mm -hmm. um, and your team, off, oftentimes, you know, it takes a little while for offenses in the NFL to get going. Those first few games, defenses own those first four games. So 
Um, I think there's a lot of excitement about the defense because it's what we know, right? And it's, you know, we've seen this defense before. We know what they're capable of doing. And there's so many things have changed on the offensive side of the football just from week one of last year. It's a totally different offense. Mm -hmm. oh, Completely yeah. different. So I think there's a lot of question marks around who's going to be able to contribute what, which is probably why most people are still talking about the defense because you know what's on the defense versus what's on the offense. Oh, yeah, you have, you have leadership over there. Even though you lost Kyle Williams, you, mm -hmm. have, you have definite leadership over there. Who's going to step up on the offensive side of the ball? Right. Because if you look, Dawkins, Dawkins, Jones, and McCoy are your most veteran guys on mm -hmm. that side. Yeah. Jones might not even make the team. Yeah. Dawkins has been a question mark, mm -hmm. and McCoy... They drafted a third rounder. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're trying to force Josh Allen to be the leader of that offense. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. By hook or crook, they want him to be the unquestioned leader of that offense. And it's fine. It's fine we want to do that. You want to win the first couple weeks, 17 10 and 14 9. That's what you're going to try to do. That's fine. You better have a 44 to 33 game in there somewhere. Yeah. Because your defense isn't going to be on point the whole year. No, no, no. And that's the one thing about this type of defense is I think you and I both agree that this team, this defense is one that understands that they need to generate turnovers versus holding the score. Yeah. You know, it's and, – and a lot of risk comes with that when you start trying to generate turnovers. You take more risks on defense than you do – uh, you know, not trying to generate turnovers, just trying to force them to three and outs, just trying to force them to under 20 yards in a drive. Yeah, yeah. You know, like just keep it close. That's yeah. all you got to do is keep it close. Right. But, you know, this offense was so bad last year on trying to generate first downs. They're so bad. I would use abysmal. I yeah. would say abysmal. It was, it was tough because half their drives went without getting a first down. You can't have that. But what do you do when you have an offense that can't seem to get a first down on a drive? You need you need the football and you need more tries. That's yeah, it. You need yeah. to keep getting the football over and over and over again. Um, and you know this defense, I think, is exciting. But at the same token, you have to be able to keep this defense into what its strength is going to be. And I think they're starting to build this defense into a smothering defense where it's like, listen, yeah. we're going to just bring the pressure. The turnovers are just going to happen. We're going to keep our guys in coverage. We're going to try and generate four. We're going to blitz. You know, one out, you know, two, one out of every five plays will blitz, mm -hmm. right, to try and generate a little bit more pressure, try and force a turnover. But I think that's going to be how the Bills try and generate turnovers is on a five-man blitz, which is different well, in this league. Well, yeah, and the thing about it is you sign, you draft an Ad Oliver mm -hmm. to try to get pressure, more pressure up the middle. You sign a former first-round pick in Kevin Johnson who mm -hmm. could, who could – if you need to drop down Hyder Poirier, you could put him in safety because you have injury concerns with him. The safest thing is to put him as put a safety him back. Yeah, put him back. in a passing down. Yeah, It's not a bad mm -hmm. thing to do. Um, you re-sign Jordan Phillips. Um, you extend Hughes mm -hmm. to say that what his value is to this defense. You're doing all of these things. And the craziest part about it was going all over the 2018 season, the Bills didn't do anything exotic that no. you're sitting there going oh if they could replicate that that's crazy they they run very basic mm -hmm. formation and they beat you head on man to man yep. if they start doing exotic stuff and start oh wait we didn't see this before and mm -hmm. this isn't what they put on tape last year you're starting you're going to start to see teams start to scramble around mm -hmm. and not some i mean i would take it even one extra one extra degree not only generate turnovers for the offense but score a couple times what do you think in the first four weeks? Let's say the Bills, they use that, you know, that upfront pressure to stop a team. Uh, third drive of the game, first week. They stop a team on the run, two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now second and 12. The Bills pull Jerry Hughes off the field. Ooh. They go star at nose, Oliver at end, Lawson at end, and go with a three front. Ooh. Go three, four across the front. Just, for, just a couple times in the first few weeks on clear passing downs, right? What do you, What does that do? That opens up a screen for Bell. <laughs> I'm no, just saying no, it, that it, you it, have the versatility with the what I team love. to be able to do that still. Oh, yeah. And what I love about that, not so much the versatility, what you have with it is that you're giving teams other things. This is a base 4-3 team. Now, what does that mean, a base 4-3? Four, three? Four line, three, line, three linebackers. All right, they come in and play nickel packages about 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. Whatever. The thing is, you're giving the other the opposing team time they have to devote at practice to what they're going to see. Mm -hmm. All right, they come out in this three front. If they kick Hughes out, 
or if Hughes goes out and they go with a three front, what are we going to do? Okay. Well, the center's going to make a one call. We're going to try to block it like this man protection if they try to come with this guy off the edge. Uh, do they blitz out of that 3-4 front? What do they do? Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the things they do? Oh, they, they mainly stay in zone? Oh, that's fine. And then you blitz out of that the next week. Right. So you're just, you're throwing so many things that the offense has to account for. Right. You can't. It's it's almost impossible to try to diagnose. Because if you, if you as a defense, keep the offense guessing, yeah. that'll extend further than the six weeks you're talking about. Right. And yeah. teams will be like, listen, I, we have no idea if they're going to do out of this system. Let's just try to run something that's safe that we know. Mm -hmm. And then you, you turn teams in one dimensional. But this highlights what the original topic was, right? We spent five minutes just talking about the defense. And why? Because we know what the defense is capable of doing. We understand the dynamic of the defense. You ask me what kind of offense the Bills are going to run, I have no idea. Perkins. I couldn't tell you. You, you talking about this. It's the EP system, man. Look it up. It's amazing. No, just explain real fast. It's a concept-based system. So there's three types of systems in the NFL mm -hmm. currently right now. There's the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Bill Walsh, Eric Coriel, mm -hmm. based on a root tree, right? Uh, and then there's the uh, Earnhardt Perkins system, which is um, concept based. So you're assigning it, you're assigning plays, but they're one name plays, mm -hmm. two name plays. So you don't have to have uh, trips right, zoom, well, and it X keeps, out, it keeps the language, flat. it keeps the language simple for yes. now. And if you're able to remember it, then you just know. You can run one play in multiple uh, out of multiple sets, so it looks like you're running a bunch of different plays, mm -hmm. but it's still the same play. Right. So, like, if, if you came out with 21 personnel, yes. you could still run the you same can run concept. That. You can run yeah. that. You know what I mean? You can come out with, instead of doubles, you can come out with two wides and two tights. Yeah. You can come out trips right, back flex to the left. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm on the two receiver side as a back. I'm running a slant. I know mm -hmm. I'm running a slant. The way that it works is... And the reason why Brian Dable came from that in New England, and New England's perfected it to another level. Sure. In New um, England, if you go back and watch tape, you could see the same route formations oh, same. over and over and over again, but out of very different sets. But Dable's from there. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, uh, it's not contingent on having a number one wideout, which is why Brady has been able to be so successful. Mm -hmm. As much as I hate him, he, he has mastered that system. Sure. And I hate it. Yep. Seven-yard passing tree. You take... It was initially developed for teams that play in cold weather. Well, and it also explains why the language is so transitional from one quarterback to another. Well, do you know why? The, the, the theory of the system, the philosophy of the system was pass to score, run to win. So you're only taking what the defense gives you, mm -hmm. which is why the Patriots, as my brother said when we were talking to him on the thing, mm -hmm. they're boring. You take mm -hmm. exactly what they give you. You're not looking for a home run shot. If they give that to you, fine. Three yards, four yards, handoff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why there will be certain games where Brady will throw 40 times. Mm -hmm. There will be certain games where they run 40 times. Mm -hmm. So you take whatever the defense gives you. Okay, we're coming up, we're running this. This is open. Okay. That's all I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the beauty of that system is that it's so concept-based. You have, you have route concepts on both sides. It's, But the thing is, it's heavily... Contingent on the quarterback knowing what to do. That's uh, what I was just going to say. You, that sounds like a system that's dependent on quarterback's eyes, right? It is. And I know what our quarterback's eyes say. I, I hope I hope Dorsey or Dable can get him to see what they see. Yeah. That's all yeah. I'm hoping. It's, and there's a, tons of positives with that one. Tons and tons and tons. But again, the reason that you hear so much about the defense versus the offense is because we simply don't know what this offense is going to do. We don't know. There's so many moving pieces to it, so many new pieces. Mm -hmm. We still don't understand what Dable's like as, as an offensive coordinator because last year it was a carousel of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. You were just, just keeping your offense on life support. You don't know what you were working with. And you were also working with, you know, blue light clearance special players where you're pulling guys off of practice squads and you're signing guys that weren't even on teams <laughs> for the last eight weeks. And, like, you're doing what you can just to survive the season. And, yeah. you know, you ended up 6-10. and 10. Um you know, the reason I'm not as high on the offense is because I'm, I know Dable's history, and I'm not really enticed with him as an offensive coordinator. But that that argument can be made oftentimes. The reason he's he was, you know, the reason some guys end up unemployed is because they didn't do well. You know, like it's. Just, I'm so curious if the talent will trump the coaching. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You got you've created 
the one thing I can say about this offense is you created one hell of a competition for every position on this offense except quarterback. You've done nothing if you've, you've done everything to create as much competition as possible. Look at the running back position. Competition everywhere. Can't tell you who's going to start. I really can't. I assume McCoy is, but I mean, you said a thousand percent that he was going to start. Well, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is of most likely it's McCoy's that job. It's McCoy's job to lose. You look at wide receiver. No, nope. I mean again, the contracts tell us who's going to start, but that doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah. So, you look at tight end. Yeah, it's now that Croft is done. You don't you don't know who's starting mm-hmm. at that position. You look at your tackle position. Him getting hurt, I think saved Kroom's job. Yeah, he's on I the Kroom here. I agree with that. I don't care if he's dating a daughter of the owner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the only positions that aren't up for grabs are center and quarterback. Outside of that, all these other jobs are all competition. Which increases speculation by experts. Who are not us, by the way. No, no. <laughs> we are certainly not. We are certainly not that. Yeah, but I mean, this is unless you're at One Bill's Drive right now, then we're definitely you can hire us for anything you like. Yeah, seriously, you know we're available for events. You know, a nine to five. I'll make the drive out to work. <laughs> I'll pick you up on my way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we're going to work today. What are you yeah. doing? I'm breaking down stats. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm that's a stat. Me. I'm a stat monkey now for the bill. <laughs> I would happily take that position. Do you guys can? You guys don't know our subscribers of our previous life. Do you remember Omaha? The stat monkey? Omaha the stat monkey. If you go to htagsports.com <laughs> and look at <laughs> our, yeah. our staff page, yeah, we would reference on our podcast many times Omaha the stat monkey. Yeah. And he made an appearance on one episode <laughs> on our podcast. <laughs> Basically, here's what it went. We'd have a, we have a bunch of guests as well. Paul was talking with my brother. I had lost my voice. So this entire episode, I am destroying T. Like, completely. I couldn't even create a sound. Mm -hmm. I was communicating with these guys via text message. So they're going, Omaha, you got the stats? (laughs) We kept calling Omaha. And I couldn't even make any sounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I did was I downloaded a soundbite of a monkey. (laughs) So every time they would make one, and I would like, if I was mad at them or they were trying to roast me or whatever, I'd play the sound bite of. <laughs> the only episode Omaha has ever been on. But Omaha makes occasional. We make occasional references to <laughs> Omaha the Stat Monkey. He's on our staff page still. Um, oh, that that brings me to another question. So for you guys, his dental I, plan sucks. By the way, you see his picture? Stop it! Stop. It. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Stop. <laughs> Listen, when you hire somebody from Bare Knuckle Boxing, what do you expect? <laughs> All right, so... That's where I got you. <laughs> that's right. Look at those things. I will Hi. cut you. I will cut you. Um, so if you guys... Um, Mario and I have been kicking around the idea. I know uh, we use YouTube as a format, but yeah. uh, what if we broke this down just to audio? If we got this down to just audio, put it on podcast form so you can get it on iHeartRadio or Alexa or mm-hmm. iTunes or whatever. Is that something you guys would use? Um, you know, we do YouTube because... YouTube's cool, but if it were available in other formats, would you guys find that to be just as cool? Would you listen? Would you use it? Would you use that more than YouTube? We just want to know. Yeah. Um, so if you guys would find that a little bit more interesting, let us know in the comments section um, because we're you know exploring the idea of expanding out to um, taking just the audio from the shows and putting it in a podcast form. It would be the exact same show, only without all of this. There's a lot of this. More of this. <laughs> I can't even talk more. to you anymore. A lot more. I can't even talk to you. We have been creeping out your neighbors for 20 minutes now. <laughs> They've been walking out and going, what are these two knuckleheads doing?